Hello, in this video series we show you how to turn these 22 tons of oak trees into this here, firewood. And once we have a pile like this, then we start stacking it for drying. So we build little towers like this one right there. For drying, I build little stacks like this. The ideal shape would actually be a long line, but the problem I have is that my the land I have is a steep slope, so I cannot really easily make uh, long lines. Long lines would be the ideal place and ideal way to uh, season and dry the firewood. Since that's not an easy possibility for me, I decided to build these little towers. And the way I do it, just to make it uh, on the bottom, if you can see, I put some uh, old used tires, I primarily do that to make uh, it easier for me to flatten the land, to have a, a flat piece, so just uh, in order to have less work, I put some, in this specific case, two uh, old used tires down there. On top of the used tire, I put uh, a pallet, old used pallet, standard size, I think it's roughly uh, four foot by four foot, something like this, approximately, maybe a little bit less, maybe three and a half uh, by three and a half feet. And then on top, that's for ventilation. The purpose of the pallet is to lift it up and assure that the air can come in from the bottom. It's elevated, that the moisture doesn't get in. That's the purpose of both the, the tires and the pallet. So moisture doesn't get in, air goes in for drying. And then on top, I built this little tower the tower is roughly, I would say, six foot tall and uh, kind of square shape. You can see primarily on each edge we got this uh, crisscrossed pattern that you can clearly see here, alternating uh, the wooden logs that I put on there. And I do this on every corner. So every corner has the crisscross shape. And then in the middle, I can vary a little bit. I put another tower here. Or I might put some extra pieces in here. You can see here it's not perfect crisscross shape. But overall, uh, these are towers. And on the very top then, I got a piece of plastic cover here. Just a very simple piece of plastic, that's all. On top of that, uh, I put some wood that I had lying around. And that's it. So that uh, forms a tower. Now let's have a look at a tower that's in construction. This is now a tower that's currently under construction. And the same thing, on the bottom I have a pallet, again a used pallet that I get for free. Uh, same standard size, three and a half uh, foot by three and a half foot. And now, since it's construction, we can see more easily how it's being built. So here you can see what I did is, I can fit three rows onto one single pallet. Also you can see I didn't quite do a perfect job. The middle row should have been a little bit more to the left. The rule is that between those little gaps, mice should fit, be able to fit in and between the rows there should be enough space for a cat to walk through. That's the basic rule. And here I put too little. I should have moved that row over a little bit. But anyway, so there are three rows. These are all just towers. So the whole row is just a bunch of towers. So you got three towers basically and here on the other dimension, we can see there's four. So it's three by four towers. So on one pallet, I can fit 12, three by four, 12 towers, each one crisscross shaped. If we look on from the top, you see each tower, one, two tower, the third, the fourth, each one crisscross shaped for good ventilation. And that's my basic uh, structure. So basically what I do is, when I do not have the opportunity to form long, long lines, I build these towers on a single pallet. So in total, I will have to make a lot of these uh, towers, each one a single pallet tower, which has uh, basically within it four by three, three rows, each row of four individual smaller towers. So a total of 12 towers in this big pile of one uh, pallet. And then the same thing. On top I put a plastic sheet and then again some rocks, something to stabilize. Anyway, this tower is not finished. It's only, I would say, maybe two, two and a half feet tall so far. And I will build it up 
uh, to approximately up to six, between five and six uh, feet tall. And then it will stop. And then I will start the next tower. Now I've covered uh, this little tower that's in progress. And you can see I put just uh, plastic on top. Again, don't cover the whole thing. Just cover the top. Maybe hang off a little bit on the side, but don't cover the whole thing. The air needs to go in, so just cover the top. And then I use some old stuff that's lying around, a few rocks, a few pieces uh, of wood or something, to make it heavy on top so the wind doesn't blow the plastic off. And that's it. So whenever I start working, take it off, keep on piling up until the got the ideal height, five to six feet tall. And then I'll stop, plastic cover on top, just the top, not hanging down too much and put some heavy weight on top so the wind can blow off the plastic cover and that's it. So that's one pellet tower for drying, seasoning firewood. When chopping wood you will see there will be lots of little leftover pieces like this one here. Perfect for kindling and I always have a box ready like this one here when I'm splitting wood and all the little pieces, leftover little pieces uh, go in this box and then later on I take these boxes, I have uh, a lot of them, a lot of these empty boxes here as you can see that I take home from the market and then I stack them up and here I get lots and lots of uh, boxes full of uh, kindling wood so many boxes, I don't know, it must be several dozen boxes I have here already stacked up Furthermore, I have a little row here where I put all the pieces that are kind of irregular shaped. The ones that do not fit into my tower for seasoning, I bring here into this pile and uh, I stack them up here. Basically everything that's irregular shaped, that's too short, too roundish, weird shapes, all of those pieces, they go here. So in total I got three different uh, separation of three different kinds of wood. The regular shaped ones I make towers. The irregular shaped ones go onto this pile on this uh, stack here. It's kind of narrowish if you can see. And then the kindling wood goes into boxes and uh, I stack the boxes of kindling wood like this.